Muhammad Ali, a boxing superstar, famously called Sugar Ray Robinson the GOAT before declaring himself to be the greatest heavyweight of all time. He's called the fellow American Robinson the greatest of all time and the best pound for pound after he retired in 1965 after losing to Joey Archer in a unanimous decision at Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Let's have the news in detail, so make sure you stick with me to the end. Now, without any further delay, let's get into the video. First up, what does Robinson and Muhammad Ali have in common? Robinson, whose real name was Walker Smith Jr., died in April 1989. He was added to the Hall of Fame after his death in 1990. Between 1943 and 1951, the American went 91 fights without losing. Randolph Turpin was the first person to beat him. Robinson beat Turpin in a rematch after losing to him the first time, but after that, he may have never been the same again. Robinson's best wins were against Henry Armstrong, Rocky Graziano, Jake LaMotta, and Bobo Olsen. Many people think he was one of the best fighters of his time. Muhammad Ali, on the other hand, is also also often called the GOAT, just like Robinson. But in a recent interview that was posted to social media by At Boxing History, Muhammad Ali said that he didn't deserve that kind of attention. Even though many people think the four-time world champion is the best ever, he thought Robinson was the best because he looked up to him when he was a kid growing up on the streets of Louisville. In the clip, Ali said that to him, in his time, and even now, Sugar Ray Robinson was the best fighter pound for pound. This means that if he was a heavyweight and fought the same way, he would be the best. So, he would have to say that Robinson is the best of all time. He also said that he has his fight movies and has seen all of them, and so do you. He was very handsome, timing, speed, reflexes, rhythm, and his body, everything about him looked great. And Muhammad Ali still thinks that despite being called the best heavyweight of all time, Sugar Ray Robinson was the best all-time pound for pound. Every record has been smashed. Hank Aaron, the record set by Babe Ruth was broken, Jesse Owens, people break all kinds of records. But Muhammad Ali really wants to see Sugar Ray's record broken. He added that no one has yet been able to beat his record. What do we have in other news? Well, USA Boxing endorses Vandervorst for IBA presidency. The Dutchman is looking to unseat current IBA president Umar Kremlev. Dutchman Boris Vandervorst picked up a key endorsement this week when USA Boxing announced their support for him in the upcoming International Boxing Association IBA elections. He's running against current IBA president Umar Kremlev and has been very vocal in his displeasure with Kremlev's leadership. He even went so far as to challenge Kremlev to a debate in a boxing ring in Lausanne, Switzerland. In a letter released by USA Boxing, the organization spells out the current crisis facing the sport with regards to not being included in the LA 28 Olympic program, the IBA being stripped of their authority to run the Paris 2024 competition, and the inability of the IBA to follow the rules laid out by the International Olympic Committee, IOC. We remain outside of the Olympic movement. We're failing our members. However, this does not have to last forever, the letter stated. USA Boxing has decided to support Boris Vandervorst because he's committed to specifically address the these issues with the IOC, which will allow them to continue with what makes their organization relevant, inclusion in the Olympic movement. Boris has even gone a step further and pledged to restore IOC financial contributions to the IBA, unlock additional Olympic solidarity funds for boxing, and form the Boxing Independent Integrity Unit to protect boxers and national federations, all within the first 100 days. Boris additionally pledged re-inclusion of boxing for LA-28. The election for IBA president and other positions is scheduled for September 25 and Yerevan in Armenia. USA Boxing will be sending representatives to Armenia. Next, let's talk about Maeva Hamadouche elimination in the quarterfinals of the Balkan Tournament. Former IBF Super Feather champion Maeva Hamadouche was beaten on points by Kosovar Donjeda Sadiku in the quarterfinals of the Balkan Tournament on Tuesday in Sofia, Bulgaria. On the other hand, victories for Wasila El Kadiri, Carolyn Crevelier, and Amina Zidani. National coach Stephanie Cotalorda explained that Maeva Hamadouche had a problem with timing, triggering at the the right distance, she was either too close or too far. Up close, the Kosovar managed to neutralize her. In the second round, it was better for Maeva and even more in the third, but the judges chose their winner. Even before turning professional in 2013, Maeva had this problem of framing and distance. In the pros, where the world championships last 10 rounds of 2 minutes, she ended up imposing her rhythm. But in Olympic boxing, there are only 3 rounds of 3 minutes and it passes quickly. Four other blues were in the running on Tuesday in the quarterfinals and all went to points. In in minus 52 kilograms, Wasila El Kadiri beat the English Tori Ellis Willits. In minus 54 kilograms, Carolyn Curvillier eliminated Sweden's Sarah Svensson. In minus 57 kilograms, Amina Zidani won ahead of the Canadian Jordan Conrad, while Staline Grazi gave way to the Uzbek Zatora Turdebikova. Six Blues will play the semi finals on Wednesday. In the 50 kilogram, we have Rim Banama Sladislava Chukanova, Bulgaria, Romain Mulaya Ziza Yukobova, Australia. And in the 52 kilogram, 
we have El Kadiri Emma Jokaiva, while in 54 kilogram, there's Caroline Cruvelier Nagina Uktamova, Australia. The 57 kilogram has Sidani Irma Testa, Italy, and the 63 kilogram has Ty Larche Navbakur Kamidova, Australia. What next? Canelo Alvarez sold much less than expected in his last fight. Looks like the Mexican's third fight against Golovkin did not reach the expected pay per view. Let's have the news in detail. The Mexican Saul Alvarez defeated the Kazakh Gennady Golovkin by unanimous decision and closed one of the biggest rivalries in boxing in recent times, which was expected to sell many pay per view PPV than it sold. The fight took place last Saturday at the T Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, would have been a failure in terms of numbers, and even the tickets to attend the stadium were sold out with the evening start. Started. Saul Alvarez, now 58-2-2, 39 KOs, defeated Gennady Golovkin, 42-1-2, 37 KOs, by unanimous decision, in what was the third confrontation between them. Two wins for the Mexican and a draw. The T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, with more than 20,000 spectators, lived his party. However, the journalist Dan Raphael stated that only between 550,000 and 575,000 pay-per-views were sold in the United States, a figure that's not even half of what was generated in the first two editions. Dan Raphael commented that the DAZN chain sold 1.06 million pay-per-view worldwide for the fight between Canelo and Golovkin, adding that in the first two fights between the Mexican and the Kazakh, they sold more than 1.3 million and 1.1 million in the United States respectively. Eddie Hearn, the leader of the matchroom boxing promoter in charge of carrying out the fight, denied this information, although he did not detail the numbers generated by Canelo and Golovkin. Although it is a fact that the third and last duel was the least successful, this direct directly affects the income of both athletes. Unofficially, there was talk of $63 million for the Mexican and $43 million for the Kazakh, although these amounts could decrease due to the drop in pay-per-view sales. So, what does the future hold for Canelo? After his last triumph, Canelo already has a next objective in his sights. Although he asked for some time to rest since he fought with an injury and has to recover from an operation he'll undergo. He said he'll take an active break, the time he has to take to be in good hands, and he'll see what comes next. He said he was going to take his time. Last year, he fought four times in 11 months. In addition, he threw out a possible date for his return. Maybe in May, September, I don't know. Saul Alvarez clarified that he faced the fight with a physical problem that will require surgery. He said that he gave his best and is satisfied with the result, but we'll have to see what comes next. He explained in dialogue with TV Azteca that even though he has to have surgery, he'll put up a great fight, and he continued, saying that it's like a meniscus cleaning on the knee, and he also has calluses on the hand and will require six weeks of recovery. Saul Alvarez asked for the rematch with Dimitri Bivol for the second leg. It's the idea, but it depends on the result. I want Zerto Ramirez to win, and if he does, we won't have to worry about the rematch anymore. But that's the idea, although right now, the most important thing is to do the surgery, he explained. So that concludes today's video. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. Also, do let me know in the comments section what you love most about Muhammad Ali. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.